Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Joe's Dark Take today. Oh man, are we gonna get technical and dive into some more immersive engineering? So I hope you guys are ready. So today I plan on getting a bit industrial. I have all of these areas over here. I have this big area right here set up to uh, hopefully get a little bit better um, situation going and then hopefully this gives us enough space. Uh, because one of these uh, builds is actually going to be quite large, so I'm probably going to even need to expand this platform over here to incorporate it. It's going to be uh, one of the steam generators. Um, but this right here, this LV wire, that's kind of what's limiting us, right? Because this, I noticed, wasn't actually draining uh, very much power to power this. It's actually being limited by the LV cable. So I think we're going to need to move up to the MV cable, which is the medium voltage, which uh, just requires electrum. Um, instead of the copper, uh, which is not too hard to get. Um, so I did turn this off because there's no need to have it running since this tank is completely full for now. Uh, now, to unlock that uh, that advancement, all I gotta do is pick up a bucket with it. Uh, do I have a bucket on me? I do. So let's go ahead and grab a bucket, and that right there is gonna complete our drilling for oil. But I want to get a distillation tower set up, so I have all the stuff in here ready to go. So an easy way to do this, right? is, I don't know if, if you guys use Sublime Text or it's any text editor will work. You can even open up Windows Notepad. Um, it doesn't really matter. But what you want to do is you want to open it up and you want to just uh, click on your notepad and then you want to kind of move your mouse over here and leave this highlighted. You can control everything and just type this out. Uh, it's so much easier to have a reference sheet over to the side than it is to constantly reference this book. Um, because a lot of this requires a lot of different items, so you really need to know what you need, and it becomes really cumbersome going back and forth. So I recommend writing this down, uh, th this little question mark here, required materials, and this is going to be everything that we need. Um, so I think right off the bat, we should start this. Now, we need to keep in mind a couple things. Um, we need to keep in mind where the input is going to be, and I believe that that is right here. I think that's the input. I don't know where the output's at, actually. That has me kind of... I'm kind of curious about that. Is the input and output the same? That doesn't make sense. I don't remember that being how it was. Let's take a look at the final product. Ah, the output's down here. Um, okay, so actually, is this the input? Blue is input. Uh, orange is output. Uh, so right here is our input source, and this will be our output. So... To do this, I think what I want is to have it facing maybe this way. So if I'm facing this direction, I want it facing this way, right? No. Um, Man, that actually kind of makes it a little bit more complicated, I think. Um, what I can do is I'll face it this way and I'll just wrap the pipe around the back to get to it. I think that will work just fine because I want this to eventually lead into something else. It's gonna lead into some more machines. And I might, you know what, I might just have it turn this way and then run the pipes along the side. You guys have no idea what's going on in my mind. I'm completely sorry. Um, but let's go ahead and just build this thing. Um, I think I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to do it this way, actually. You know what? There's also the, another slot that we have to worry about. Um, it really doesn't matter too much which way this is facing. I'm going to go with, uh, with this way right here. So I want the blue end facing this way, and we need to place it somewhere over here, leaving a little bit of space. So I think this spot is gonna be good. It looks to be like it is a, let's see, what is that, a five by five? No, one, two, three, four. Oh, it's, on, it's, a, it's an even number. So it's a four by four. Okay. So let's go ahead and build that four by four. Uh, I kind of know that the these blocks are gonna go here, and then a pipe is gonna go there in order to get this the way I want it. So let's do this. Let's get this uh, build started. Um, so what we're gonna need apparently right from the beginning, by the way, this is, in my opinion, the easiest way to do this. Pause it, go down, and then we start the build like so. Okay, so it's a four by four. I kind of have that, that down. Um, I need to figure out where I want it. Uh, I think right here is gonna be a good spot. So let's go ahead and get this thing built. I uh, might actually move it over one, giving myself a little bit of space. There's not going to be much space to walk, but that doesn't, that's not what I'm concerned about. I'm not concerned about the walk-in area. All of this needs to change, and I think it was right here that the fluid pipe needed to go. 
and everything else kind of filled in. And this will give you an idea of how big this thing is. Just like that. That is our starting platform. Now, the fact that we have flight makes this so much easier to build. Um, yeah, this needs to go all the way up. This is a piece of scaffolding, and it's going to be really nice uh, being able to visualize this. So the next layer, uh, I can already tell kind of how it's going to be built. This goes here. We're going to need to finish off our other two engineering blocks. Um, the rest is a piece of, is, looks like just scaffolding going up. And then on this side is a pipe going all the way up. Uh, I don't know the exact height just yet, but I'm sure I could do an estimation. Let's see. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 11, or okay, so it's 12 tall from this end. Right. 12 tall from here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. By the way, this is also going to get power. So, this does require power. So, we will be powering it off of what we have. It won't be the fastest thing in the world, but it will get us started. So, on the scaffolding part, um, you want to make sure you're placing it on the upper part of the block and uh, just wrap it around. Um, and we're going to be skipping a couple of blocks. So, it's, it's 1, 2, 3, then the upper part if you kind of understand that. So not not too horribly difficult. One, two, three, and then upper part. And it should end right there. And that should actually be the exact amount we needed because we needed, uh, what is it, 33 of those? If I remember correctly. Yeah, 33, so I had a few left over. But I think this is it. I think this is the build. Um, now, it, it should tell me in here, under the distillation tower, um, where I need to hit this, uh, let's see. It says by using the image engineer hammer on the redstone engineering block. Okay. So last but not least, let's grab our engineer's hammer and we click that. There we go. So this is the distillation tower. Now power needs to go to this. So power is going to go right here. I'll just add another uh, wooden post over here. Let's go ahead and pull that out. So we have a wooden post. I'm just gonna throw that right here for now. That should be good. And of course, I can slap that on there. And then we should be able to give this power. Now, I need to route the pipes around as well. So this is the output pipe, which is actually gonna be leading to some other machines. Um, the steel scaffolding. There's also some containers that we can use um, that can hold, which are multi-blocks. So this is... Um, this is an output for a solid item that this can generate. We also have this ladder that actually functions as a ladder. And these platforms like function as well. So you can actually stand on them. Like this is super cool. I, lo I love the way this build looks. This thing is pretty sick looking. Like if you want an industrial area, man, throw these around your factory buildings. I tell you what, this creosote oil really does come in handy. Look at this. This is how we make our insulated cable and it requires that creosote, um, which is really nice, even though it's kind of weird because creosote oil is kind of flammable. It's a, it's a pretty flammable material. And the fact that we're coating our electrical cables kind of makes me worried that, uh, man, these cables could spontaneously combust, which wouldn't be really good. So one of the other cool machines that we probably need to make, now that we have this sort of setup, um, I probably want to adjust some things. Now, um, I, I probably want to set this tank up first. I don't know if I can route this uh, we're gonna find out but what I need to do is I need to just go ahead and place a single iron uh, sheet metal right here and then we'll just place on the side four fence posts just like that now these fence posts might get in the way I don't know um, but what I want to do is I want to build off the side and I don't remember this right here by the way is a tank that I'm making I don't remember does this uh, get, no, okay. So this right here doesn't get anything, but these are pretty simple to make. Uh, we have one, two, three, and then this fourth layer is going to be where I cap things off. And by the way, all of this simply put right here. You can see it's, it's three tall and then the fourth is the cover. So just like that, everything is built up. And this right here is a tank. Yes, it's a storage tank. I know it looks really weird because of the the shaders. Oh well, <laughs> I don't. I'm not worried about that. Um, but what I should be able to do, I think I can hook a 
pump up to this. And maybe see if anything's going in there. I think usually it would display it. But I don't think this is going to, to show anything. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this off. And then I'm going to hook this in like so. And then we have these outputs over here that we can then route over here. So we give ourselves a little bit of a buffer, right? And that is what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and grab an axe. I think I have one laying around in here. I, of course I do. All right, and so we're about to create some trip hazards. <laughs> we're gonna take this and we're just gonna route over this over to the input. Now, none of these machines have power just yet, um, but all I gotta do is flip this on after we uh, redo power here and we should be ready to go. Um, I did go ahead and make the power cables as you've seen. So here's our NV connectors. So MV wire connector here, MV wire connector here, and then over here gets an MV wire connector. Um, now I'm thinking about changing this up. I don't want this here. I want that there. <laughs> I love that little bug that it that happens. Um, and for this, we're gonna need, of course, the relay. So I did make some of those as well. Plop the relay over here. Prop a relay right here as well. Hopefully this will work. If not, what I'm probably gonna do is actually break this. And I know this will work. Let's go ahead and reroute this. Perfect, just like that. Um, I might be able to throw some stuff on the side. There is something here, you just can't see it. There we go, now we can see it. And I think that's about it, that should work. I definitely wanna use insulated MV cable. And then insulate it over here, and then over to this. So now all of this should have some power. As you can see, it is gaining some power. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this on so that way we start to collect some oil in here. And I think there's a tool we can potentially use to see how much exactly is in here. Cause I don't remember if you can click on this to see any information. Don't think so. So to get this to output automatically, all we gotta do is get ourselves a lever. Of course, I'm gonna need two levers actually. I'm gonna place a lever here, and if I turn this on, it's gonna automatically output. Now right here, I can use this to turn this on and off. As you can see, this, by the way, is throwing this into the ground. Uh, if we put a chest there, it should fix that. I am basically putting oil in here, and you can see we're generating diesel and molten naphtha. Those are two things that we're generating, and as you can see, we only have one output. So that leaves us with a little bit of a conundrum, right? Um, well, we need to get enough fluid built up in here that I can hopefully create two more of these to separate those materials. And I might just place them right here uh, just to sort of get them separated. And then we can just use a chest to sort of uh, fill this. I don't think I have a chest on me, but if we go down here, I'll grab a chest real quick and we'll plop that down. That should be enough to hold this. Uh, and this is what, bidium? Yeah, this is bidium. This is used to make like roads and stuff. Some pretty cool, pretty cool stuff here. Uh, yeah, you can make asphalt with it, um, which I think lets you walk a bit faster on it. Um, asphalt is really nice for making roads, um, and this is a great way to get it. So as you can see, we're already building up quite a bit. I'm gonna shut this off for right now, and wow, I can't believe our power is, is managing to keep up with it and generate as much as it already is, because I don't even have the steam and stuff ready yet. Oh, there's a lot to do today. So I have my new two tanks sitting here and uh, let's go ahead and hammer them. There we go, now we have two separate tanks. Now to separate this fluid out, um, I think that I can, as so long as there's a fluid in here, it won't accept two fluids. So if I do this, that should put one fluid in here and this should put the other fluid inside the other one, right? Yeah, because there is no other fluid generating. So this will separate our fluids and what we should end up with is now being able to turn this back on and thus using up our oil and uh, these tanks now starting to fill with those two different types of materials. So if I haven't already told you what I'm actually going for, and it's we're working towards plastic um, right here. This is our ultimate goal for age three and uh, that is to get to plastic. 
uh, plasticity. That is something that we're working towards. And it does take a little bit to get there. Um, mostly getting all of these multi-blocks built and collecting all of the resources required to build them. As I've been generating the resources <laughs> over the last few episodes. So resources haven't really been a big problem for me. Which has been really nice. Really nice not to worry about that. When you kind of know what's ahead or what's to come, you kind of know what to prep for. And that's what I've been working towards the last few episodes. So, let's take a look at what I want to make. That is a steam or a solar tower. So, this is the solar tower. It is pretty cool looking. I'm not going to lie. It's a pretty sick looking uh, machine here. And uh, we need to build this along with another part, which is going to require four of these. So, if you see this... It actually doesn't just require what it says here. It requires four times that. So, because um, you're going to be making four of these. So, let's go ahead and get to building this. So, let's get started. Let's see. Can I knock this down to its base components? Okay. So, we are going to need some fluid pipes, as i seen. And scaffolding. And this is a, let's see, a 3x3 three three build. Um, but it's not just a 3x3 three three build. I actually want to leave the 3x3 three three and then have um, enough room for these to be kind of separated away from it by one block. So it looks like we have enough room here. And right here, we technically have enough room here as well. Okay, so this should work. There just can't be any space in between them. And it does need to be at least one block away. It's like 1 to 10 blocks away from this uh, this build. Um, and as far as the the location of it, let's go ahead and take a look at where our input and output is. So it does look like just about every side, other than the redstone side, we have inputs and outputs. I don't know how they expect us to not have blocks. I guess that's whenever we go to hammer them. Um, but right here should do the trick. I don't. I think we have to have four on each side. That would make the most sense to me. I'm gonna try one. Uh, I'm placing it here, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. So I want this to be the direction, which means I need to turn this way. And redstone block, you're right here. So really need this pattern sort of like this. All right. Uh, is this the block that I need to stand on? I think so. I'm trying to map out where this is going to be. Yes, just like this. Okay. So fluid pipes. Just like that. And then the scaffolding. Just like this. And then we're going to move up the next tiers. And we're going to keep going. Using each of these materials. Um, it does look like those are fence posts. And then right here is going to be the steel. Um, and then also the redstone engineering block. So redstone engineering block. This is where we're actually going to be using some steel fence. I needed 20 of these. And then the sheet metal just like that and it looks like the center was hollow was it not ah it gets a heavy engineering block so yeah this does require a few heavy engineering blocks and i'm just going to go ahead and keep building up until we get this done so this is officially built didn't really take too much to build it let's go ahead and activate it look at that that is pretty cool looking now i'm pretty sure that the next builds they do require there to be more than one um, I'm pretty sure it says the solar tower needs to be at least one. Oh, there needs to be at least one solar reflector to work. So I think the more of them, the faster probably. Um, so at least one of these and that should be fine. Uh, but of course I want to probably use more than one. This only works during the day, by the way. So I, I should mention that. So it looks like one, two, and then a scaffold, one scaffold. Okay. And I want these a few blocks away. I want this at least one block away right here. So one, two. And then it was a scaffold. Another block. And then a scaffold. And then it was light engineering. And light engineering. And then a piece of silver in the middle. And then I think you click the silver. And that gets us the lens we need. Right. So this should work. All we should, I mean, to try this out, as you can see, we have one right here. So having four of them is definitely going to be better. So I'm going to go and get the rest of the four built. And uh, yeah, this should be at max power with four of them. So just to demonstrate how this works, I went ahead and pulled out some uh, some water here. 
And I believe we can input the water just like this. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> uh, we might have to use actual input here. This, this doesn't even accept a bucket of water. Um, excuse me, you should be working. Okay, so what I'm trying to make is steam. You can see right here a bucket of water in this side should work, but it's not. Okay, so there is something that I want to make to generate that water. Um, and hopefully we can get it to work. I might have to use some of these fluid pipes here in order to function. So for this to work, I need to make a melter. Hopefully we can uh, we can get this to function right. Um, I'm going to take this melter. And I think we have access to some packed ice. I think packed ice can be melted in here. If not, snowballs can also be melted, which is kind of nice. I'm probably going to remove this section because the this is the output, right? I probably should have turned this around. That's going to be kind of awkward, but I'm probably going to route it under the ground anyways. I think these are inputs right here. So, for example, let me go ahead and break this. Because I'm going to have stuff, I guess, going through the middle here. Um, we need to break that. Actually, I'm going to probably move this back just a tad bit as it, I don't want it to catch on fire. I did forget that that was wood. <laughs> I need lava. Um, that is one of the things I'm going to need. Let me just go ahead and place this real quick. We're going to go over here. We're going to grab some lava real quick um, because I just need, and this has packed ice on it. This is probably where I'm going to get my packed ice, at least for now, because I know there's a bunch of other islands that have packed ice. We need to place a melter down. So to get the melter to work, we need to place a block here, then place a block over that, and then we should be able to get fluids in here. Now it's at heat two. And we should be able to melt things like snowballs, for example. Um, I think I have... Let me grab my shovel here. And we should be able to grab some of this. Um, specifically the snow. Alright, so that's a bunch of snow. <laughs> and that should be good, because this, uh, this should be able to be melted down into water. Let's just test. How fast is this? Always on. Do we need to give this power? I don't actually know. And let's let's take a look at this real quick. Snowballs. Oh, snowballs in a smeltery can do that? I'm pretty sure the melter. Let's take a look. Melter. Actually, I have it over here. So, actually, it's like solid snow. Okay, so let's pull this out. It's solid snow that uh, does this. Okay, so that's not that's not a, that's not horrible. Okay, so it does a little bit of processing. And then we get a little bit of water. Okay, that's good. That is good news. I'm going to go ahead and hook this up. That should be able to send water into there. We need a little bit of an engine running. I think I can place an engine right here. And then I need a lever on top. And that should be some simple automation going. To pump water out of here. And send that into this, I hope. Now, it is nighttime, so it will not work at night. But is that going to... Oh, yep, there it goes. It's starting to send water. So we need to get some kind of reliable source. So ice, obsidian gives us actual lava, which I don't really want. Even though that wouldn't be too bad, like making lava with lava or making obsidi turning obsidian into lava, that could be kind of useful. As lavas or obsidian is pretty easy to come by. Um, this will give us experience. It's something to do with our. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, amber. Let's see. Poison amber. Hmm. So pretty much snow and ice are our two options here. Hmm. So this happened really fast. I just watched this and it just immediately turned. That was super quick. Okay, so. Something that I definitely probably need to get is a bit more snow. <laughs> I think it's time for us to go snow farming uh, just to simply get us a bit of water. I would go ice farming, but I, I do have silk touch. I just, I don't want to put silk touch on this pick. I don't even know if we can. We don't, I don't think we have emeralds yet. Um, and I do have a silk touch pick, but it doesn't have ore excavation. So... I think an excavator would be a good option, but I think this shovel with just like an efficiency enchant 
I think this is just good enough. So since we do have snow, it, instead of just farming all of our areas, we could just build a snowman. Like, why, why not? Wow, I, I feel like Elsa now. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's go ahead and place this. That'll create herself a snowman. And we just wanna make sure that this is covered. And so that way our snowman cannot escape. And uh, probably place some blocks right in here. Actually, we probably don't want any blocks on these corner pieces. Might want to place them in the floor. Uh, just because we want to be able to get in here. And, well, I mean, farm some snow. So the best way to do that is just to stand here in the corner and just farm snow endlessly. Yeah. What in the world is this monstrosity? A falling knight from Ender Zoo? What? I don't think I've seen this thing before. It is horrifying looking though. So because this melter only can accept one item in this slot, we do need to lock it. As you can see, if I put one here, it stops the process. So it can only accept in the first slot. So the best way to do that is probably just to lock it, slap a hopper on here. That way it will keep that first slot filled and that should be producing the water we need, thus increasing the amount of steam. And we could store steam but we're probably going to immediately use it. And of course, this is going to build up as well. Now, steam could be used for several different things, not just these recipes. It could be also used to generate a lot of power, depending on the uh, particular setup that we have. And um, I mean, this this steam is not too bad. If we could generate this, I mean, it's generating at a pretty decent pace. So as always, I do want to give a huge thanks to one of my patrons, and that's going to go to Ray Jordan. Thank you so much. For all of your support, I do appreciate it. Man, we got a lot of stuff done today, and uh, I'm super happy about it. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Of course, if you did, be sure to slap that subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, also give this video a huge thumbs up. You guys know how it goes. As always, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you next one. And thanks for watching.